This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. It's 6 o'clock, and it's a pretty quiet start to our day with just a few flurries out there. However, a winter weather advisory will go into effect starting at 4 p.m. tonight. The evening commute and tomorrow morning's commute have the potential to be slick. We'll have the latest in your Storm Team 6 forecast. A Hendricks County teacher and coach accused of sexual misconduct will appear in court today. We're live with how much time Tyler Bruce could face in jail if convicted. Making workplaces more friendly for new moms and moms-to-be. Women need to be supported when they come back to the workplace. We're talking to one business owner who says he's not waiting for the government to help pregnant employees. And removing workplace barriers. They want to be employed. They want to contribute to the community. Hiring Hoosiers is looking at how one local organization is committed to giving jobs to adults with special needs. It is 6 o'clock here on your Wednesday morning. Thanks for joining us. So much to get to this morning, but first we need to talk about the weather. On the way to work this morning, you may hear all of that salt crunching <laughs> on the roads. Good job to NDOT and DPW because it was A-OK -okay this morning as I made it in. Yeah, I didn't have any problems either, but it's just something That's... to keep in mind. And we want to talk to Todd about what everyone around the area can expect this morning. Yeah, you know, as you walk out the door, I had no issues on the roadways, but my front porch was a little on the slick side. And that difference is the roadways, it was in the 60s the past couple days, so they retain the heat. So especially if they have salt on it combined with uh, the temperatures the past few days, with the exception of some isolated slick spots, shouldn't have too much in the way of any issues across the area this morning. It's just mainly those secondary roads. We have a few flurries that are out here currently across parts of the area, and there's a little bit of patchy drizzle down to the south, but that really shouldn't cause too much of an issue uh, for us uh, during the course of the morning drive. What we'll await later on this afternoon is going to be uh, this rain and snow mixture that is going to come in here and that is going to bring heavier precipitation combined with temperatures at that point that will be falling below freezing and that will be our concern. We're right around the freezing mark a little above or below depending on where you are currently across the area and the temperature should get up to about 35 degrees by the noon hour. Cool and damp but no significant precipitation will break down the storm system for tonight in the winter weather advisory for you hour by hour coming up in just a few minutes. All right, Todd, thanks so much for keeping a close eye on those roads this morning. No problems here to the northwest. This is our in traffic camera at I-65 and I-465, where you can see traffic is moving along up to speed. So let's plan out your drive. South side drivers, let's take a look at your commute. Heading in on State Road 37, traveling northbound from State Road 144 in Bargersville to the I-465 ramp system. A quick 13-minute drive, no delays there. Now, we want you to know we are keeping an eye out for any of those slick spots that may develop on your roads this morning in Dodge and Indy Snow Force are working to make your commute as smooth as possible. The Department of Public Works says 80 trucks are on the roads this morning and they're going to remain on the roads until at least tomorrow morning. Officials with NDOT's East Central District, which includes Indianapolis, say they have 35 trucks on the roads. New overnight Metro Police continue to search for the suspect in a shooting on the city's north side. This all happened around 1230 this morning near 38th Street and Kenwood Avenue. Police say the shooting happened behind a former CVS store at the location. A man was found with a gunshot wound to the arm. He was taken to the hospital and is expected to survive. Police believe the suspect had a connection to a car seen leaving the scene. If you have any information on what may have happened, please call Crime Stoppers. The time now is 6.03 and we are here at the live desk this morning, still waiting the complete results from the Iowa caucuses. We first alerted you to the delay in the results yesterday morning at this very same time right here on Good Morning. Indiana. Now, the delay was reportedly caused by an error in an app made by Shadow Inc. New this morning, we've learned that that company was started by members of Hillary Clinton's failed presidential campaign. Also this morning, Iowa election officials say the app wasn't tested before being used. The app's meltdown led to officials manually submitting all of those ballots. And this morning, 71% of the results are now being reported. A former South Ben Mayor Pete Buttigieg leads the Democratic candidates with almost 27% of the state delegates awarded. He's followed by Senator Bernie Sanders at just over 25% of those delegates, though Senator Sanders has a narrow lead in the overall votes. Elizabeth Warren and Joe Biden, they round out the top four. We'll send you a push alert on the RTV6 app once 
and if the results are made final sometime hopefully today. And now back to the app reportedly at the center of this long delay. The app that failed in Iowa was set to be used in Nevada, which has a key primary later this month. Nevada officials this morning now telling us that they're not using that app in their primary. Lauren and Meredith, now back to you. Raphael, thank you. A TriWest teacher and coach accused of sexual misconduct with a student is expected in court today. Tyler Bruce is scheduled for a preliminary hearing this afternoon in a Hendricks County courtroom. Our Kelsey Anderson is joining us live from Danville this morning with the very latest. Kelsey. Hey, good morning. So Tyler Bruce is charged with two counts of child seduction and obstruction of justice, which are all felonies. Now, this is something that Call 6 Investigates has been following since this summer. Court documents say he solicited illicit Snapchat photos from a student and touched her under her clothing on several occasions. Bruce has not provided a response to the criminal charges. He is now on unpaid suspension with the Northwest Hendricks County Hendricks School Corporation, excuse me, and the district taking steps to fire him. Now, Tyler Bruce faces up to seven and a half years in prison if he's convicted of all three felony charges. And of course, we will keep you updated on this developing story, both online and on air. Reporting live, Kelsey Anderson, RTV6. Kelsey, thank you. Metro police are looking for this car in connection to a West Side homicide investigation. IMPD says officers believe this is the suspect vehicle connected to a fatal shooting early Sunday morning on Rockville Road, just east of Holt Road. The Mary County Coroner's Office has identified the victim as 42-year-old Stephen Jamel. If you recognize the car, please call Crime Stoppers. This morning, police are still searching for a suspect after a woman's car was stolen from an animal hospital with her child inside. The woman left her two-year-old boy inside the car at 3.30 yesterday afternoon while she went in all pet care on West Washington Street. While she was inside, a man reportedly stole her car with the child in the back seat. The woman came outside and noticed that her car was missing and called 911. The suspect allegedly parked near a church on South Belmont Avenue and told a neighbor that there was a kid in the car and then ran away. The boy was not injured. This morning, police are still searching for that man and ask if you have any information about what happened, please call Crime Stoppers. The time now is 6.07 and while lawmakers continue to study the need for accommodating pregnant women and working mothers in the workplace, some businesses are taking matters into their own hands, creating accommodations to attract working moms to their companies. Our Lisa Donovan is live outside the State House this morning with much more. Lisa, fill us in on this, what they're talking about. So, Raphael, a bill to accommodate working mothers in the workplace was turned into a study committee earlier this week, meaning no laws are going to are going to be put in effect to require businesses to create those accommodations for working mothers across Indiana. But we did talk to one company who says they're going to move forward anyways and create these accommodations as a way to attract people to their company. Now, the mother's room at marketing focused consultant agency Lev has a mini fridge for breast milk, a place to store breast pumps, a pumping in progress sign, and a comfortable chair. Some of the accommodations that were outlined in the initial bill that was amended earlier this week. Lev is a company that's made up of 51% women and the director of marketing says decisions like creating a mother's room are very important to their company, especially when it comes to retaining talented employees. If we weren't making these accommodations for women, if we weren't finding ways to do simple things like adding a mother's room, we would lose that talent. And in a tech ecosystem like we have here in Indianapolis, it's vitally important to find ways to keep those really smart, talented women here. Now, the bill introduced in the Senate would have made it mandatory for employers to provide accommodations like a private space, time for pumping, unpaid time off, work to recover from childbirth, and more frequent or longer breaks for pregnant women. The bill was amended to study those requirements, and that version passed in the Senate yesterday. Governor Holcomb says that he is still committed to the infant and maternal health rates in the Hoosier state, and he's going to continue to work towards that this year. Reporting live, Alyssa Donovan, RTV.
96. Alyssa, thank you. Well, finding a job can be difficult, but that's especially the case if you have a disability. New at 613 in Hiring Hoosiers, I'll show you how one Johnson County organization is giving adults with special needs a space to grow. All right, and we told you earlier about how NDOT is treating roads this morning. All new at 627. We're going to find out if it is necessary to get a car wash once it dries outside so you don't waste your money. Todd. All right, as you walk out the door here this morning and you start your commute, most of you probably won't have to put the windshield wipers on. There could be a spot flurry and or a little bit of patchy drizzle. So your morning commute will give you the caution light for maybe a spotty slick spot out there. But the evening commute, that's when the more significant wintry mix moves in, especially the further you go through the evening drive. That's why 6 p.m. I'm giving you the red uh, caution sign there. We'll talk all about the incoming storm coming up in your Storm Team 6 forecast. The time now is 610. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Now at Ashley Home Store, this is home. Our Hiring Hoosiers initiative is highlighting barriers in the workplace. Barriers can keep people who are able to work from getting meaningful jobs. Well, for adults with special needs, finding a job and a place to call home after high school, it can be a challenge. But in Bargersville, one local organization is breaking down that barrier, showing the community that people with disabilities can work. Well, it's fun. I like to work here with my friends. Not going to find a shop where you receive it. It's a cool car. Oh, oh, yeah. Nestled in a quiet corner of Main Street in Old Bargersville, a quaint shop is filled with busy hands. Been in business for a little over a year. And we are a unique boutique for happy, funky, cool people and their pets. The Hope Gallery provides more than special handmade gifts to the community. It provides a place for people like Alex Parker. As a parent, what does that mean to you? We don't want parents to feel like we felt when we started this and that there's just no place for our child to be after high school. Alex's mom, Jennifer, created the Alex and Alley Foundation with a mission to empower and enhance the lives of young adults living with autism and developmental disabilities. And their first big project, the Hope Gallery, is a place where adults with special needs can learn job skills and just belong. We decided we'll just start creating jobs for them. They want to work. They want to be employed. They want to contribute to the community. Here, they run all aspects of the store, from creating these handmade pieces to counting money to running the cash register and assisting guests. Would you like a receipt? Uh, no, that's okay. Would you like a little bag? Please. Okay. Chelsea Davis is a team member working here for six months now, gaining skills. When you go for an interview, you want to tell them that you have skills of learning how to count money. Chelsea is thriving from this opportunity to work, and she can handle a lot of responsibilities. A lot of times I'm here running it alone, and you know, it's been, sometimes it's quiet, but then other times it's like, hey, I can do it. You know, it helps me get more skills to learn how to run a business, and this is what it's all about. They want to be a part of the community, and the community needs them. They are such wonderful people. The community needs to see that they have skills, they have value, they have worth, and we're showing the community that. And Jennifer tells me that with 25 team members currently, they're always getting inquiries. So we do have big news to share with you this morning. They are starting a second big project, Happy Hounds Doggy Daycare. This will be located off State Road 135 and Stop 11 Road on the south side, a doggy daycare run entirely by adults with disabilities. Of course, as they get ready to open, we'll go inside and show you what they believe is the first doggy daycare run by adults with special needs in the nation. If you want to learn more about the Alex and Alley Foundation, their latest and endeavors and how you can get involved, you can visit our website, HiringHoosiers.com. There we also have information on their upcoming gala. Oh, I love that story, Lauren. Thanks for sharing that with us this morning. Hundreds of Hoosiers are unfortunately going to be losing their jobs after Diamond Chain announced it's moving its operations to Illinois. The company says their manufacturing operations currently in downtown Indianapolis will move to Fulton, Illinois. The move will take 240 jobs out of the Hoosier state. A spokesperson for Diamond Chain says
says the move could take two to three years. We will continue to keep an eye on that. But in the meantime, we're also keeping an eye on the sky because uh, we've had some rain this morning and in some places it's freezing rain, a little bit of ice mm -hmm. out there, there Todd. Yeah, you know, it just kind of depends where you are. It's not a widespread problem with the ice. I had some on my front steps, my sidewalk and the roadways were just fine. Uh, my commute into work, but that may not be the same, especially for some of you up to the north, but the crews have been out there. Any salt on the roadways should easily work here this morning now that the precipitation has basically come to an end. But you see the temperatures at or below freezing up to the north, a little above freezing as you work your way to the south. And obviously when you're talking about any type of precipitation, temperatures are very key. So this morning's commute, there could be a stray slick spot or two, but then the temperatures climb up into the mid 30s here as we work our way through the one and three o'clock hour. The precipitation returns this evening as the temperatures start to fall. So the evening commute, there'll be some rain around, there'll probably be some snow around, but we probably don't run into bigger issues until after the seven o'clock hour, once the sun is set and the temperatures fall back to freezing or below freezing eventually. So the earlier you can get home today, honestly, just the better off it will be. And here's this first round of wintry weather that went through late last night, earlier this morning, basically coming to an end. There's a few flurries out there, a little bit of patchy drizzle, and that's just about it. Here's the storm system for later on uh, this evening. So let me walk you through today, hour by hour, through a good chunk of the day. We're just dealing with clouds. There could be a little bit of patchy drizzle off and on throughout the day. Nothing significant. By three o'clock, some of this precipitation is starting to come in. Even though you see some snow, temperatures above freezing at this point. Again, it's probably not until sunset, which is a little after six o'clock, that we start to run into some issues across the area. It's mainly snow to the north. I do think there'll be a thin band of a wintry mix and some freezing rain. When you talk about freezing rain, a degree or two in either direction makes a big difference. So just know that's probably going to be somewhere along Interstate 70. Could be a little above, a little below, just depending on the final track of this system. The further south you are, more in the way of just plain old rainfall throughout the evening hours. And this will continue off and on throughout the overnight hours as well. But the surge of the heaviest precipitation tonight is before midnight and then throughout the morning commute tomorrow. It's just some patchy snow, some patchy freezing drizzle, and then lots of clouds for the rest of Thursday. So a winter weather advisory goes into effect starting at four o'clock tonight through Thursday morning. A wintry mix arrives this evening, one to three inches of snow to the north along I-70. It is going to be a wintry mix. The three inch totals, that's probably not going to be close to Indianapolis. Just know that the three inch totals, the further north you get. Most people probably one to two inches of snow and then we'll bring in that little band of freezing rain. This is your ice potential here and we're talking about a couple hundredths of an inch of a freezing rain and that is not enough to cause any issues with power outage or falling branches on our impact scale with one being low. That's on the low side but it is enough probably to put a three category in there for the potential for some slick roads tonight and into tomorrow morning's drive. Once we get past tomorrow, though, it's pretty quiet. Mostly cloudy skies. Temperatures fairly seasonable for the beginning of February. All right, Todd, thank you so much for keeping a close eye on your roads as you head out the door this Wednesday. Here is a live look on the north side, I-465 over the White River. Traffic's moving along just fine, eastbound and westbound, no delay. So let's take it live out to our live drive vehicle right now, showing you what you can expect on the roads. This is two hour east. We're traveling right now on I-70 eastbound near Mount Comfort Road, where you can see we have open roads this morning. No reports of any issues from our photographer Shay Goodpaster in the driver's seat. Of course, we'll continue to keep an eye on your commute and we'll keep you updated. The time now is 6.20 and this morning RTV6 raising awareness about a program helping seniors who can no longer make decisions for themselves. The Volunteer Advocates for Seniors and Incapacitated Adults program, it aims to help those with Alzheimer's, dementia, or mental illness make financial and medical decisions. The program provides a court-appointed advocate to help those individuals. Anyone can refer a person to this program. After that, they're evaluated by a doctor and then a judge makes the decision to appoint a volunteer. Without this program, it, um, it's going to negatively affect the community, um, especially nursing homes as well. Because um, if you have a resident that has nobody to make these decisions or to help um, guide them or have that relationship of trust, what can a nursing home do? 
Uh, so let's make the connection this morning. You can find referral forms and information about volunteering on our website, theindiechannel.com or the RTV6 app. A six-year-old has a simple mission, to spread joy. New at 625, how his parents and neighbors are making possible his goal to make others happy. And February is American Heart Month, and this morning we're encouraging you to get your maximum healthy heart rate. Now to find your maximum heart rate, take 220 and subtract your age. These tips are part of the Go Red for Women campaign sponsored by the American Heart Association. The time right now is 622, we'll be right back. Dream Mattress Studio at Value City Furniture. So what's trending at six? You know, as the parents of a young man who plays sports, every day should be take a shower day, right? That should just be the rule <laughs> everywhere true. in America. But today's a different kind of day here across the land. This is National Shower with a Friend Day. Now, this is kind of an odd thing to say because you would think with a friend? No. In fact, this day is reportedly meant to teach people around the country about the harmful effects of chlorine. So they thought that that would be a good day to just to tell a friend, hey, keep that in mind. So <laughs> if, you're, if you're online today and this pops up, it's nothing crazy. It's just that they want to get the word out about water and chlorine. Mm -hmm. Still a little it. crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think if you're <laughs> looking for something to do with a friend, maybe this is a little more your mm -hmm. speed. This is a little more my speed. Coors Light is encouraging okay. you to chill with a dog and a beer this Valentine's Day. The beer company <laughs> offering $100 to cover dog adoption fees. The deal is available to the first 1,000 people between now and February 21st. You must be of legal drinking age and submit a receipt of adoption to the beer company via text message. What a great a idea. idea. That's pretty it's cool. It's interesting. Well, here's a good news story. A kindergartner from Turlock, California is doing his part to spark happiness in his own community. Six-year-old Levi Navarra created Joy Box. The idea behind the box is simple. You put in your wish oh. and the Navarras work to make it happen. What? I love All that. All the Navarras say their neighbors have even jumped in to help spread joy. Levi hopes that his idea continues to spread to other communities across the country. What a great, simple idea. Oh, and they look like they're wow. awfully busy there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Well, what would spark a little joy in my life would be some warm weather, <laughs> maybe not a rain, but hey, we, we, it's February. We gave you that Sunday and Monday. <laughs> we'll take you, you it. Know, beg yeah. Beggars can't be choosers here across <laughs> the area. Anytime you're in the 60s, uh, you're in good shape in February. More of a seasonable pattern here over the next uh, couple weeks, it looks like. Temperatures today going to hold pretty steady this morning, right around that freezing mark. Could be a little bit of patchy drizzle through about 7 a.m. and maybe an isolated slick spot across the area, uh, but nothing widespread. Our issues will all come later on this afternoon and more so this evening. The snow you see and rain near Dallas and Oklahoma City, and that is what is heading our way. So as we go throughout the course of the day today, our rain chances will really start to ramp up this evening. We'll break down the snowfall totals and the potential for maybe some freezing rain across the area as well, coming up in just a few minutes. Todd thinks February tends to bring rain, snow, sleet, mm -hmm. and dirty cars as we're experiencing right now. And it gets to the point where many drivers just give up on keeping their cars clean. I give up. I give up. Yep, I give up. <laughs> this morning, our John Mattery shows us four good reasons to wash your car so you don't waste your money. Winter is the time of year you need to wash your car the most because it gets mucked up every few days. But with shorter winter days, many drivers will go weeks without a wash. Is that a good idea? Unlike Clark Griswold, most of us don't want our cars to be an embarrassment. So consider a car wash on those sunny February or March days. The weather's going to be nice, so I decided that I'd get a car wash. Auto body shops say there are four great reasons to clean that muck off your car. First, washing improves visibility by keeping the mirrors and windows clean to see other cars. Two, a clean car keeps your hands and clothing clean. Three, it keeps the paint shiny and prevents rust. Dust and minerals in road dirt will damage paint over time. And four, washing improves your car's value. A clean car outside tends to be cleaner inside, which gets better trade-in. But from the dozen that stink file, one reason to not wash your car, you may not want your car to stand out in a bad neighborhood by being the shiniest car on a street of clunkers. However, that nasty car might have you saying, doesn't that stink after a while? Because if it's dirty, it's hard to have much pride in your ride. Bottom line, unless you're trying to blend in with the neighborhood of old, dirty cars, give yours a wash. You don't waste your money. Working for you, I'm John Matteris. Good morning, Indiana.
Metro police continue to search for their suspect in a shooting on the city's north side. This happened around 1230 this morning behind a former CVS store near 38th Street and Kenwood Avenue. A man is expected to be okay after he was shot in the arm. Police believe that suspect had connection to a car leaving the scene. A man from Indianapolis faces charges following a crash that left a passenger in his car dead in Hancock County. Police say Aron Taylor was passing stop vehicles on County Road 600 East when he crashed into another car at State Road 234. 22-year-old Reno Cook was killed in the crash. Taylor tested positive for THC and now faces charges of OWI causing death and reckless homicide. Four people, including three firefighters, recovering after this fire ripped through a home on the city's south side. That fire started at a home on Keystone Avenue near Troy just after 6 Tuesday night. One firefighter was checked on the scene after falling through the attic to the first floor. Two others taken to a hospital with minor burns were told every Everyone is expected to be okay. Over to the northeast side where firefighters say a bucket of gas and incense started a fire at this auto shop. Crews were called to the business on Franklin Road and 38th Street Tuesday afternoon. Employees say they lit incense to help with the odor of fumes coming from that bucket of gasoline. Firefighters say the embers from the incense got into the bucket and the gas caught fire. The scaffolding is gone and the stairs are open again at the Indiana War Memorial in downtown Indy. After roughly two years, restoration work is complete. The Indiana War Memorials Commission tells us crews made repairs to the pyramidal roof and then replacing and restoring granite and limestone. The entire project cost $2.9 million and took a bit longer than first estimated. All right, it is 6.30 here on your Wednesday morning, and it's a special day across the nation, really. It is National Weather Person's Day throughout the land, and of course, we hit the big store here at RTV6 and got Todd Clausen <laughs> his favorite snack, so if he could maybe produce right. a much there warmer forecast. These Oreos, Starbucks. Payday. These Oreos should All get right. me at least 20 degrees more. Uh, well, <laughs> I'll return them <laughs> because nope. we already used that. Can't keep I'll, that promise. I'll just take it for what we already saw on uh, Sunday, and thank you guys. Uh, appreciate you, everything. You do here as well each and every day. There is a winter weather advisory that's going to go into effect starting at 4 p.m. today. So I know you'll see it at the top of your screen. It'll be there all day because we need to alert you, prepare you, right, for what's going to be happening later on this afternoon. This does not apply to this morning, even though there is a little bit of precipitation out there. There's not a lot, some patchy drizzle, a few snowflakes out there as well. And temperatures are hovering right around the freezing mark, so can't rule out the chance of a slick spot. I did have a little ice on my front steps. So you'll have to be careful with maybe as you walk out the door as well. But the roadways were just fine, especially crews. They've been out there treating them. But our bigger issue is uh, later on tonight when uh, this batch of precipitation, which is rain and snow in Dallas, and it's going to look very similar to this when it arrives here in central Indiana in the sense that snow will be on the north side. There'll be a little band of uh, freezing rain and then some rain in uh, southern locations across the area. Temperatures hovering right at 32 degrees in Indy. So there are some areas that are below freezing going forward in this forecast. Just not a whole lot happens through the noon hour. Temperatures don't really move much with the clouds that will be in place. We should be right around 35 degrees by the time we get to your lunch hour. But once we get to 3.30 onward, you notice the rain and snow starts to arrive across the area. We'll talk more about it for you coming up in just a few minutes. But let's get you updated again on the roads at 6.32 with Lauren. Everything's moving along pretty much up to speed, Todd. So that is a good news for any folks heading out the door right now on this Wednesday. Here's a look from our live drive vehicle in the westbound lanes of I-70 near Greenfield. Good morning to you. You shouldn't have any problems on your roads for your commute and we'll, of course, keep you updated on any issues that we may run into this morning. We do want to give you a heads up, though, now to some construction work that's happening this weekend could really impact your drive. A ramp in downtown at the North Split will be closing. NDOT says the ramp from westbound I-70 to southbound I-65 will close at the North Split beginning Friday night at 10 o'clock. That won't reopen until 6 on Sunday evening. Crews will be repairing and replacing a barrier wall that was hit last month. Now here's an intersection that you'll want to avoid starting today. Citizens Energy says it will begin what it calls sewer rehabilitation work at 16th and North Meridian Street, a pretty busy area. That work is scheduled to begin today and last through the end of next week, weather permitting. The intersection will remain open, but various lanes will be closed as needed. Citizen says it's trying to maintain the sewer system in that area that dates back more than a century. The time now is 6.34 and Call 6 Investigates continues to follow the story.
story of Tyler Bruce. He's the teacher and coach at Tri-West High School in the Northwest Hendricks School District charged with sexual misconduct involving a student. Today, Bruce is set to be in a Hendricks County courtroom for a hearing. Our Kelsey Anderson is live in Hendricks County this morning with more on what's set to happen. Kelsey, good morning. Hey, good, good morning, Raphael. So Tyler Bruce is charged with two counts of child seduction and one count of obstruction of justice, which are all felonies. It's a story called Six Investigates has been tracking since this summer. And court documents say he solicited illicit Snapchat photos from a student and touched her under her clothing on several occasions. Now, Bruce has not provided a response to these criminal charges, and he is now on unpaid suspension with the Northwest Hendricks School Corporation and the district taking steps to fire him. Now, if found guilty of all three charges, Tyler Bruce faces up to seven and a half years in prison. And of course, we will continue to update you on this developing story, both online and on air. Reporting live, Kelsey Anderson, RTV6. And we have more details on this case. You may recall that the case also led to criminal charges against Tyler Bruce's former boss at Tri-West High School. Former principal Adam Benner is due in court on March the 3rd. Benner is charged with failure to report allegations of child abuse to law enforcement or the Department of Child Services. That's a misdemeanor charge, so Benner received a summons to appear in court and will not be arrested at this time. A former employee of Center Grove Schools is pleading guilty in an elaborate fraud scheme involving more than $350,000 in school funds. Federal prosecutors say Emily Holmes defrauded the school system out of money over a three-year period between 2016 and 2019. Prosecutors say Holmes doctored pay records of part-time employees adding hours they did not work. She then changed their direct deposit accounts to accounts that Holmes controlled. A sentencing date has not yet been set. Holmes has to pay back more than $410,000 to the school system and the IRS as part of her plea deal. At 6.36, Eskenazi Health is hiring Hoosiers. A nursing and imaging recruitment event will be held next Tuesday. This runs from 3 to 6 at the downtown hospital campus. The event is open to all imaging professionals, registered nurses, and RN students who will graduate in May. Eskenazi says it's an opportunity to learn more about working for the Health Network and the benefits it offers. For more information on how to RSVP, you can just go to HiringHoosiers.com and click on the Career Resources page. Right now, only on RTV6, several new nonstop flights are being added out of Indianapolis International Airport. The official announcement will be made later this morning at the JW Marriott here in downtown Indianapolis. A source tells RTV6 that the new nonstop flights include St. Louis and Nashville. The airport nor the state would confirm those destinations. More details will be made during the Routes Americas 2020 conference in Indy today. The annual meeting brings together hundreds of airport and aviation executives from around the world and helps lay the foundation for new air routes. We'll have more on this developing story on our website, theindychannel.com, as well as later today on the news at noon. Making work more comfortable for mothers to be. Next, a state lawmaker have trouble deciding how to do that. We'll show you one company that isn't waiting for the legislature to figure it out. It could mean more teachers carrying concealed guns inside schools. Next, new regulations making their way through the state house that still have a long way to go before becoming law. You're watching Good Morning Indiana. It's 6 37. And Keller, right now. Welcome back. More than 80,000 babies are born right here in the Hoosier State every year. Most are born to women who work outside of the home. A bill that would create accommodations for pregnant and working mothers was discussed this week, eventually stripped down to an amended version. And so in short, the bill is not passing as proposed, but one company is not waiting for laws to be made and is taking their own initiative. Alyssa Donovan is live this morning. And Alyssa, what is the company doing on this very critical issue to many moms? So this company in Indianapolis is not waiting for decisions to be made in here regarding pregnant women and working mothers. Instead, they're just going to move forward with these changes in the hopes that it attracts more women to their company. Now, marketing company Lev has created a mother's room in their downtown office. It includes a mini fridge for breast milk, a place to store breast pumps, a pumping in progress sign, and a comfortable chair. According to the Indiana State Health Commissioner, basic changes like these can have a significant 
impact on the health of moms and babies. A majority of the employees at LEV are women, and the director of marketing says decisions like creating a mother's room and other adjustments for pregnant women and moms is very important to their company, especially when it comes to retaining employees. If we weren't making these accommodations for women, if we weren't finding ways to do simple things like adding a mother's room, we would lose that talent. And in a tech ecosystem like we have here in Indianapolis, it's vitally important to find ways to keep those really smart, talented women here. Now, the bill introduced in the Senate would have made it mandatory for employers to provide a private space and time for pumping, unpaid time off, work to recover from childbirth, and more frequent or longer breaks for pregnant women. The bill was amended to study those requirements, and that version passed in the Senate yesterday. Now, 27 states have passed laws that will create com accommodations for pregnant women and working mothers. Now, right now, Indiana is not one of them. However, Governor Holcomb says he he remains committed to the infant and maternal mortality rate here in Indianapolis, in Indiana rather. Reporting live, Alyssa Donovan, RTV6. Alyssa, thank you. Also at the State House, a bill that requires Indiana teachers who carry guns in school to go through annual training has passed. Under the bill, teachers who want to carry concealed guns on school grounds must go through a 40-hour training program, followed by 16 hours of additional training every year. The bill also specifies that the the training must include 20 hours of scenario-based training, six hours of marksmanship, and a personality screening. As it stands now, teachers can carry guns with permission of their school districts, but there are no training requirements. A similar bill passed the Senate last year, but did not pass the House. Some House Republicans believe it could lead to mandatory training for all gun owners. It is 643. A bill that could have led to cameras to catch speeding drivers in construction zones is dead for this session. The bill sponsor in the State Senate did not call for a final vote on Tuesday. That's the last day bills could pass in one chamber with enough time to pass in the other. Republican Senator John Ford of Terre Haute says that he was told the bill would knock the hearing in the House committee even if it passed the Senate. The bill would have allowed NDOT to launch a pilot program to use cameras to catch drivers who speed through construction zones. The lawmakers did approve an effort to have more TV shows and movies like Hoosiers, that classic, and Parks and Recreation made here in Indiana. The Senate voted overwhelmingly for a bill that authorizes a film and media production program. That program could offer rebates to production companies to help lure them to our state. Right now, the program does not have any funding, and that would have to come during state budget negotiations, which come next year. Hollywood's biggest night is this weekend, and just like in years past, there are questions about those whose names are not on the list of nominees. Next, whether the Oscars are truly representing all of the movie industry. Todd. As you walk out the door here this morning, temperatures are hovering right around the freezing mark, and there's a little bit of patchy drizzle, so there could be just an isolated slick spot out there the bigger issue, your ride home from work, especially the later you get into the evening hours. The wintry mix arrives, could get slick as we deal with a mixture of snow, sleet, and freezing rain. We'll break down the details for you and the impacts coming up when Good Morning Indiana continues. The time now is 644. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Fosterkids.org to make a donation today. Welcome back. We are just days away from the Oscars here on RTV6. And again this year, there's a little bit of concern mm -hmm. among some about the lack of diversity among those nominees. Yeah. This award season has welcomed a slew of diverse talent. Aquafina became the first Asian American to win the Golden Globe for Best Actress. And the South Korean thriller Parasite got six Academy Award nominations, including Best Picture. I used to be called Parasite, so I'm, I'm, I want Parasite <laughs> to win. That's a different story. But there's still criticism because of a lack of female directors and people of color among the nominees for the top acting categories at the Oscars this year. ABC's Romita Puga has more from Los Angeles. I'm working on a novel. This year, the Oscars taking heat for once again ignoring female directors I'm be free of death. and only having one person of color in the top acting categories. This year's Oscars got some backlash for their lack of diversity in their nominees. Yeah. What can you tell us about that? Was it surprising? You know, I'm never surprised by what happens in the industry because it's been, a, it's been an industry fraught by lack of inclusion and diversity. UCLA sociologist Darnell Hunt is behind the annual Hollywood Diversity Report, examining trends in film and TV. I think the pattern over the last few decades has been a couple of steps forward, a couple of steps backwards. 
After a diverse group of nominees in 2019 with Green Book, Black Panther and Roma each taking home Oscar statues, the 2020 nominations were a bit of a disappointment. Our society has continually diversified to the point where we're over 40% people of color now. And of course, women have always been the slight majority you know, in the, in the country, slightly over 50%. Um, but Hollywood hasn't reflected that reality. The Academy has been diversifying its voting pool since the hashtag Oscar So White controversy in 2016. And it's worth noting that a record 62 women were nominated for Oscars this year, almost a third of the total nominees. Over the years, there's been progress for women and people of color on screen, but not behind the scenes. Female directors would have to quadruple to reach proportionate representation with men. I'm so sick of people saying that love is just all a woman is sick for. I'm Many industry experts believe Little Women director Greta Gerwig was snubbed a Best Director nomination. You can't control the world around you, but you can try to work as hard as you can. And I think what makes it undeniable is the sheer number of women making work. Punk concludes it's important to annually document diversity in the industry, but more importantly is to connect those changes to the bottom line. Because after all, it's show business and the only color that matters in Hollywood is green. In Los Angeles, Romina Puga, ABC News. And don't forget you can find out who takes home the Oscars this Sunday, where? Right here, only RTV6. Our coverage begins with the Red Carpet Show at 6.30, followed by the 92nd Academy Awards Live at 8 o'clock Sunday night on RTV6. And the winner is, for best forecast, Todd Clawson. Every day, even if it's a little, you know, wintry. Don't make that happen. I, I would not give like, not giving him that to the I would, forecast. Listen. We're a live. trophy, not even a bronze we're medal. Alive. Oh. We're healthy. Indot's going to work tonight. <laughs> DPW. Todd Clawson, take it away. Yeah, You're he, a winner. He, Come on. He, he, you know, we had, we had our winners the beginning of the yeah. week, Sunday and Monday, yeah. two record highs in a row. Uh, but now we're, you know, getting back to more February like weather here. And there's a little bit of a wintry mix that fell yesterday evening and this morning. You can't rule out the chance of a slick spot, but you notice here, Storm Team 6 radar is pretty quiet. There could be some drizzle still in spots, but no widespread issues. All our issues arise later on this afternoon and this evening as we deal with this batch of precipitation heading in our direction. This is going to look, radar is going to look just like this when it arrives in central Indiana with snow to the north, that band of mixed precipitation in the pink, and then we have uh, the rain on the south side of that system. So temperatures right now are sitting in the 20s and 30s across the area, which isn't bad for this time of year. The problem is we just have that moisture around, so there could be a slick spot or two and throughout the day temperatures don't do a whole lot we get up to right around 36 degrees when temperatures become critical as later on this evening as that more significant precipitation arrives in our forecast and by the time we get to nine o'clock the temperature is right around freezing i would kind of use a sunset as your time when we could potentially start to run into some issues and that's just after six o'clock even if we're just above freezing once the sun sets even though you won't see a lot of sunshine today that's when I think we could start to run into some slick spots on the roadways for the evening commute. This winter weather advisory, which includes most of Indiana, with the exception of down to the south, goes into effect starting at 4 p.m. To the north from Lafayette to Tipton over towards Marion and points to the north, it's snow to a wintry mix overnight along the I-70 corridor. Snow to freezing rain to mixing with just plain old rain. And then to the south of Indianapolis, Bloomington, Columbus, it's snow quickly over to rain. Shouldn't be too many issues, I think, the further south you get. So here's the timing of this precipitation arriving. It comes in towards the evening drive, but again, I think we're okay until after sunset. But here's the dividing line. Snow to the north. There's that band of mixed precipitation, just plain old rain down to the south. The more significant or heavier precipitation is from the onset till about 1 o'clock in the morning. After that, we taper the precipitation off to just some snow showers, mainly to the north and maybe a little bit of patch drizzle heading into the morning drive. The snowfall totals will range from about one to three inches north of Indianapolis, Tipton to Crawfordsville, over towards the Marion area with the three inch totals being the further north you go. Less than an inch of snow in the metro area where the mixing takes place, but we are expecting a thin band of freezing rain across the area. Probably just a couple hundredths of an inch of ice. Uh, that is not enough to take down power lines or take down tree limbs, but it is enough to 
slicking up the roadways, especially the untreated roadways. Once you get off the main uh, interstates and thoroughfares, be aware of those come your Thursday morning commute, Lauren. All right, Todd, thanks so much. Let's take a look live outside from our live drive vehicle here. Right now, our photographer Shea Goodpaster in the driver's seat, a dash cam view as he travels through the north split. He was on westbound I-70, hopping onto northbound I-65. And you can see some brake lights every now and then, but this is says just normal part of getting into the rush hour this morning. No crashes or delays in this area that we can report. Of course, we'll continue to monitor your Wednesday commute and keep you updated. He won a championship and then he made a lot of families very happy. Up next, we'll show you how this lineman uh, gave forever friends to a whole lot of people. We'll be right back. Firing Hoosiers only on RTV6. Derek Nottie of the Kansas City Chiefs is a champion on and off the field. You may remember that he made the confetti angel <laughs> after Casey's big win on Sunday. He followed that up that by giving back <laughs> in a big way. Derek is a big dog lover. After his team won the big game, he went to the shelter at the Casey Pet Project and paid the adoption fee for every single dog there. More than 100 of them awesome. in all. That means walrus, <laughs> raggedy ann, puddle, and sugar plum fairy, just to name a few. All have new homes uh, at no cost to their owners. Oh my goodness, that little guy there with the little <laughs> spot over his eye. So cute. What a great, great thing to do. I love that. Yes, we love that. We don't love the no. forecast today. Uh, <laughs> no, it's not, I'm okay. I'm okay with it. It's <laughs> not too bad. Uh, cloudy skies here through the first half of the day. Winter weather advisory starts at 4 o'clock as a wintry mix develops across the area. Todd, thanks and thank you for joining us. We're back here in 25 minutes in throughout Good Morning America. Don't forget to check the RTV6 app for news throughout the day. See you tomorrow morning. Have a great day.